Hello everyone, Foxy here, and welcome to Mostly Mental. For this final video in my series on combinatorics, I'd like to return to where I began with partitions. I know I originally said I would prove the pentagonal number theorem, but in the meantime, Mythologer beat me to it, and he did a great job, so I won't reinvent the wheel. Instead, I'll link that video below and talk about a related and equally interesting topic, Young to Blow. And along the way, we'll get to see some fun techniques that I haven't been able to show off yet. Given a partition, that is, a division of a number into smaller parts, for example, 10 is 5 plus 3 plus 2, the associated Young diagram is a grid of boxes where the length of each row is equal to the corresponding part. So here we have 5 plus 3 plus 2. A Young to Blow is what we get when we fill the boxes with the numbers 1 through n, with the constraint that each number is smaller than everything below it and to its right. So, for example, we might fill this to get 1, 3, 4, 6, 10, 2, 5, 9, 7, 8. Or we might fill the numbers in order 1 through 10, going horizontally, or going vertically, or in total, we might fill it in any of 450 possible ways. The first thing I'd like to show you is a really pretty correspondence between permutations and pairs of young to blow of the same shape. For instance, let's say we have a permutation that takes the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and maps them onto the numbers 2, 3, 7, 4, 1, 6, 5. We'll see how this corresponds with the pair of tableau 1, 2, 3, 6, 4, 7, 5, and 1, 3, 4, 5, 2, 6, 7. The first thing we'll do is we'll take these pairs of numbers and we'll interpret them as coordinates in a plane. So here we have 1, 2. 2, 3, 3, 7, 4, 4, 5, 1, 6, 6, and 7, 5. Next, we'll draw lines starting at each of these points, going upward and to the right. And notice that some of these lines are going to intersect. We'll cut those lines off at the first intersection point. And continuing this, we have this, this, again, these two will intersect, so we'll cut them off, and these two will intersect. And then we'll write down the coordinates where these lines extend off the page. So here we have 1, 2, 3, 6, and here we have 1, 3, 4, 5. And then we'll do the same procedure starting at these intersection points. So once again, we'll extend the lines upward and to the right, and we'll cut them off at the intersection points. And we're only concerned with intersections from this round, so intersections with the previous lines don't count. And again, we'll do the same thing up here. And that'll give us some more lines going off the page, which gives us the coordinates 4, 7, and 2, 6. And we have one more intersection point, so we'll do this procedure one more time. And this will give us 5 and 7. Notice that the numbers we've written down from each round, when we stack them all together, give us a valid to blow. That is, each number is smaller than the ones below it and to its right. And further, the two to blow we end up with have the same shape. It turns out that's not a coincidence. It's always going to be true, regardless of the permutation we started with. 
And it's not too hard to show this, so I recommend as an exercise proving it in the comments below. Now, we've outlined how to take a permutation and turn it into a pair of tableau, but we can also go in the other direction. All we have to do is reverse the procedure. So we start with the last row of each tableau and draw the lines inward until they intersect. And then we repeat one row at a time going upward until we end up with our collection of points. And then reading off the coordinates gives us back our permutation. This whole procedure is an example of what's known as an algorithmic proof. That is, we aren't directly describing how these numbers get translated into these. Instead, we're describing a sequence of steps that we can take, which will eventually transform one into the other. And these sorts of proofs are common in several fields of math, but they're particularly common in combinatorics. I find them really elegant, and I hope you do too. Earlier, I mentioned that there were 450 ways to fill in to blow for 5 plus 3 plus 2. But how did I get that number? To answer that, we'll first want to define what's known as the hook. For any box in a Young diagram, the hook is the collection of boxes to its right, plus the boxes below it, plus the box itself. So here, for this top left box, the hook is made up of these five, six, seven elements. And computing the hooks for each of the boxes, we get six, then four, two, one, four, three, one, two, and one. Okay, so what do these hooks give us? Well, notice that if a filling of boxes gives us a valid to blow, then in each hook, the smallest element must be at the top left. And the reverse is also true. If each hook has its smallest number in the top left, then putting them all together, we end up with a valid to blow. Well, now we can look at this through the lens of probability. How likely is it that a random filling will give us a valid to blow? That is, how likely is it that a random filling we'll put the smallest number at the top left of each hook. Well, looking at the hooks individually, it's going to be 1 over the hook size. Since each element is equally likely to be at the top left, and only one of them is going to be the smallest. And putting the hooks together, we multiply the probabilities. So we get 1 over the product of the hook sizes. And there are n factorial total ways to fill it, so multiplying that by the probability that each is valid, we get a total of n factorial over the product of hook sizes valid to blow. And plugging in n equals 10 and the hook sizes we computed earlier, we end up with 450 possible to blow for this shape. This turns out to be the right answer, but there's a problem with this argument. The hooks aren't independent. They overlap in all sorts of complicated ways. And so we can't just blindly multiply all the probabilities together. Not to worry, though. We can solve this problem by instead looking at what are known as random walks. We'll take our tableau, which will look something like this, and choose a box somewhere within it at random. And from there, we'll choose a box somewhere within its hook, again at random, and jump to that. And then we'll repeat, jump from there to a box at random within its hook, and jump, and keep going until eventually we end up at a box in a corner like this where there's nowhere left to go. Now we can ask, how likely are we to finish at each of the possible corners? It's easiest to answer that question by looking at what are known as projections of the walks. That is, we look at the set of x-coordinates and the set of y-coordinates that our walk takes us through. 
and we consider all of the walks that have these same projections. So, for example, we might consider a walk that looks something like this, where these stop at the same coordinates in both x and y, just in a different order. I'll skip the details, the full paper is in the description, but with some careful bookkeeping and a bit of induction, we can get the probability that a randomly chosen path has given projections. And summing over all possible projections, we can get the probability that we end at a particular corner. With a bit of algebra, this comes out to this hook length formula here for the tableau with that corner chopped off, so h of the tableau without the corner, divided by the hook length formula for the full tableau. And we're guaranteed that this process will end at one of the corners, so if we sum these probabilities for all possible corners, we have to get 1. And then multiplying through by the hook length formula for the full tableau, we get h for the tableau is going to be the sum of the hook length formulas for the tableau with each possible corner removed. And this here is a recurrence relation on the h's. To show that this hook length formula counts the valid fillings of a tableau, all that's left to do is to show that the number of fillings follows this same recurrence. And we can see this by looking at the position of the largest number within the tableau, in this case, the position of 10. Notice that it has to be in one of the corners, since if it were anywhere else, there would be something smaller either to its right or below it, and that would make it an invalid tableau. So we have to place 10 in one of the corners. And once that's done, we have to fill the remaining boxes with the numbers 1 through 9. But Notice, this is exactly the same as if we had just chopped off this corner and started by filling this tableau with a corner removed, again, with the numbers 1 through 9. So there have to be the same number of ways to fill this tableau with 10 placed in this corner and this tableau with the corner removed entirely. And 10 can be in any of the corners, so we have to sum over all of them. And if we do, we end up with this recurrence here, the same one we had before. And so the number of fillings and the hook length formula follow the same recurrence, so they must be the same values. That is, the hook length formula counts the number of valid young to blow. Now let's take a step back and look at what we've done here. We've taken a fundamentally random process where we jump from box to box inside a tableau, and we've used it to learn something about the structure of the tableau itself. Here, we got out a recurrence relation and even a count. And these are entirely deterministic things. There is no randomness in here. That's a really powerful idea. This kind of probabilistic proof can be tricky, but it lets us get some really beautiful insights into combinatorics. And with that, this series is at its end. I don't mean to suggest that I've covered everything there is to know about combinatorics, or even that this is the last video I'll ever do on the subject. But there are a lot of other really exciting topics in math, and I'd like to share some of those with you, too. Thank you so much for sticking with me through this series. Your support and feedback have meant a lot to me. Thank you for watching. I hope to see you again soon.